I'm Jeff Altman, the Big Game Hunter. I'm the head coach for Job Search, CoachingHQ.com, and welcome. I'm a career and leadership coach. I work with people nationally, sometimes internationally, but mostly in the U.S. to help people get better results during their job search, and once they're on board, better results and being more effective in their new jobs. And I thought I would do something today where I gave you a sense of some changes I think you might do in your resume, because I haven't done a lot of resume um, information recently. Most of it I did years ago, and I wanted to update it for now. So I thought that this might be very helpful to you. And let me start off with change number one, and that is underneath your name, I want you to put your highest degree and any certifications that you might have. And then from there, see, the old format had it with education, and education might be placed at the end. Here, I want it up front and center. So if you've got a master's or a PhD and different certifications, the place to do it is directly under your name where it has some impact. Because we've eliminated the uh, line that has your street address there. So it's really replacing that. Then you might go into a third line where you have your email address, phone number, city, state, and zip code, and a link to your social media presence. So that could be a LinkedIn profile. That could be an about.me page uh, where all your uh, link, uh, all your social media is coalesced in one location. So, again, first thing is the certifications. The next thing is a third line that has your email address, phone number, city, state, and zip code. It has to have the zip code there so you can be found in a database and a link to your social media presence. Next, in an area... Uh, you might talk in terms of your core skills. Um, so in this way, in the next section, and this is focused on more senior professionals because you have some core skills here. It's a keyword rich summary of your background uh, and experience. Uh, so the first paragraph might be a, a general statement of what you've done. And then the next uh, section of it involves bulleted keywords or phrases that are positioned early in the resume so it's recognizable to an applicant tracking system. Like if you look at functional resumes, often they have this section in the resume. And from there you go to particular achievements uh, that you've had during this period of time or during your career, focused on the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, and I say that because very few of you are going to want to do things that you did 20, 25 years ago. And business has obviously changed sufficiently that no one really cares what you did 20, 25 years ago. Um, next is I want you to focus most of your energy and most of your text on recent experience. Following that same theme of no one cares about things that you did in the Stone Ages, as significant as they were, you, know, you want to emphasize the recent work unless it stinks. Uh, and if it stinks, you've got bigger problems than that. You're probably going to go to a functional resume. Um, you're going to want to get achievements quantified in each section of each part of your employment history. So again, you might talk about role responsibilities, accomplishments, if you're in a technology field, the technology that you've utilized, and a metrics that demonstrates the impact of your work on the organization. So that could be money saved, money earned, or percentage improvement, or uh, if there's a metrics that says that your performance is 32% better than the average in the organization, it demonstrates superiority with others. I want you to think in terms of a two-page resume, two and a half tops, and uh, it had been focused on, as I said before, the last 10 to 15 years. The Stone Ages should stay there. If you feel compelled that you want to tell people more about your background and stuff that you did in previous time, than most recent 10 to 15 years, 
one sentence. That's it. Prior experience was with, and you have a one sentence summary that talks about uh, where you worked previously, perhaps dates, and really depends upon whether your history is stable or not, uh, and the roles that you held. Education, unless it's from a prestige school, goes toward the end. And lastly, again, you stay within a 10 to 15 year framework. Resumes that overemphasize extraneous things that have nothing to do with the job description are a waste of an employer's time. They are reading things and wondering, why do I care about this? If they even get to read them. If you emphasize the wrong material, an applicant tracking system might think that your background is more geared toward that and less likely to fit the current situation that they have. Most of these systems are, are uh, emphasize what's higher up in the resume and thus more recent experience is advantaged. I'll simply say, if you'd like me to critique your resume, I'm happy to do so, and I charge for that. Uh, if you visit uh, thebiggamehunter.us, there's a tab on the top. You can order a critique. If for some reason you're finding it hard to find it, message me by first connecting with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash the big game hunter. Mention that you saw the video because I'm always curious about uh, where people find out about me. And I'll just simply say, I don't make a living by doing resume and LinkedIn profile critiques. I'm a career coach. I help people make changes professionally. Resumes and profiles are a small piece of that. Most of what I do is involved with coaching you throughout the entire process. You perform well in your interviews. You perform well in negotiations. That your resume gets results, your LinkedIn profile attracts people. If you're interested in my one-on-one -on -one coaching, again, Connect with me on LinkedIn and then message me there. I'd love to help you. Hope you have a great day. Take care.